Hi, I'm KC, and this is Redshift, and today I'm going to introduce you to one of my best friends in the whole galaxy, the moon. Our moon. Earth's moon. It's kind of arrogant to call our moon the moon because there's a lot of moons, like, all around, but ours is, like, the moon. And we're best friends. Hopefully you're familiar with the moon by now. It has indeed been in the sky for, uh, quite a while. If you're not, that's the big, the big, uh, circle that comes out at night and lights up the night. Sometimes wolves. Something about wolves. I don't know. But if you're really interested in getting into the world of astronomy, you want to be more than just acquainted with the moon to see it sometimes. You want to be like best friends with the moon because best friends with the moon is a beautiful friendship. So today I'm going to introduce you guys. The best way to learn about the moon is to just like go out and look at it. So that's what we're going to do. But before we do that, I'm going to recommend that you find a moon map. Those exist. I'm also going to say that you do not need a telescope to look at the moon. You can easily look at the moon with a good pair of binoculars or a spotting scope. So now we're gonna go outside with my trusty telescope and take some eclipse of the moon. No, yeah, scope out the terrain. No, we're leaving. Let's go. So behind me here we got my trusty telescope, Harvey. I call him Harvey, he is a reflector telescope, which means he uses mirrors to see into the deep darkness of space. And so he's gonna help us out today. A lot of people think that the best time to look at the moon in its full glory is in its uh, full moon phases, which is true if you're just standing here on Earth, but if you're looking through a telescope, the best time is really during those crescent phases. But right now it's in its first quarter phase, which is still pretty cool to look at, and we'll look at some of the seas and some of the craters. It's still kind of bright out, but I'm gonna point the telescope towards it anyway and we can see what's up we got it we got it we got it all right so just for reference this is what the moon looks like with no aid and the lens flare of the moon wow just from from good old earth and this is it on my phone you can see it moving ever so slightly out of frame there we go look at that guy and so that line where all the shadows are and you can see the crater and it, it cuts in half is called the terminator line and so wherever that line is, you can see all the shadows of the craters and you can really see their depth in there. Just some moon basics for those of you who don't know the moon very well. Uh, the moon has no atmosphere, which means it has no weather, which means the land has never changed. Everything that's on or happened to the moon uh, can be seen from Earth, which is pretty cool. So we just have this geologic record of its history just by looking at it. So all those craters are from all the asteroids that have hit the moon, and those dark spots on the moon are called maria, and those are just from lava overflows that settled down over the rest of the moon. And so we're gonna go see the names for those and maybe see some other things. And there we are. Looking good today, moon. All right, so in our view here, we can see at least four, even five, I guess, mare, which are seas, because back in the olden days, they did not know the moon was made of cold, dead rock. One of the most appealing ones to look at for people is that dark one in the middle right there, because that is the sea of tranquility, where we put a freaking person Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Unfortunately, you cannot see lunar landing sites from Earth because that would require a crazy, crazy magnitude to see, but it's really nice to just know that we put people on both of those seas. That sea above it is the Sea of Serenity or Mare Serenitas or something like that, and we've landed stuff there as well. So we put all kinds of stuff on the moon. Just for the sake of nomenclature, apart from the Sea of Tranquility, you can locate all the other seas around it, since that one's the darkest. That one just to the right of it is called Mare Crisium, or Sea of the Crisis. I don't know if that's like crisis, like I'm having a panic attack crisis, cause that is the sea I would swim in. And that one on the bottom is the Sea of Fertility. But yeah, those are the seas. There's that little one too, I forget. Hold on, what is that little one? Mare Nectaris. So the little one's Mare Nectaris, also known as, whoa, something flew in front of it. Okay, so that's fun to know. Those are just big, big, big seas of basalt, which we have here on Earth. So if you ever see basalt, just think of miles and miles and miles of it, all in all directions. And that would be what the moon is like. Let's look at the craters. I always forget the names of craters. In a lot of the craters on the moon, you can see one like you see right here in the middle, and you see a little mountain in the middle of it. Why is there a mountain in the middle of a big impact zone? Just because of the nature of the moon's surface, when meteors hit it, the land bounces back up and creates a little mountain like that. And so whenever you look at craters, sometimes you'll see little peaks like that one right up there. 
There's one deep in the shadow of that crater right there too. So yeah, that's that. The rest of this video is just gonna be nice moon footage. I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoy the moon. I hope you're inspired to become best friends with the moon also. It is a beautiful place. It's a very empty place, but it is still beautiful. Um, hope you all have a nice day. See you next time.